guys and welcome to another Wargame Red Dragon tutorial video with me Bubble Box and today we're moving on looking at the aircraft still and this is going to be the third and final tutorial looking at the aircraft and today we're looking at the anti-tank aircraft, the bombers, the inter not the interceptors, we've done the interceptors and the multi-role aircraft. In the last video we looked at the air superiority fighters, interceptors and the seed aircraft and in the first of these three videos on the uh, aircraft we looked at managing your aircraft. So if you want to look at managing them go back a couple of videos and take a check on that. Now we'll start off looking I think at the anti-tank and as normal we're looking at the Americans and the Russians as examples and you can extrapolate that info to everyone else. The first one is a really interesting one everyone's probably heard of this the A-10A Thunderbolt II the tank buster. Now this is really interesting because it's one of the very very few aeroplanes that have actually got armour. You can see it's got two front, one side, two back and one top which means it can take some AAA flak fire in the face. You know, fairly, fairly okay although of course to um, radar gated missiles you know it's going to have more difficulty but it is quite strong it can take a few hits. Now against it it's quite slow um, with a, with a uh, speed of only 500 k's and its stealth is poor so it's going to get seen um, but it's going to take a couple of hits before it goes down so they sort of kind of weigh each other out a little bit but it hasn't it's got a very quite a poor ECM as well of 10% so really you're going to be wanting to only run this into areas where you know there's not going to be a lot of or any even anti-air fire and what this is particularly good at is taking down big armor pushes or armor rushes which have where the tanks have kind of either lost in some way lost most of their anti-air support either through players killing their anti-air or through them just not keeping up with their armor push so they're really good at taking out armored vehicles and they can take out medium tanks and big tanks and the reason is they've got this really nice missile and they've got six of them and it will fire these six missiles off fairly rapidly and it's got a good range so it can fly in firing these record these missiles without getting too close to the AA. Although obviously, if you get fairly if once it's fired a few, you might want to evac it so it doesn't get too close. The AP power on these missiles is terrific at 26 AP. Actually, is only 40%, but the AP power, you know, if one does hit, it's going to take these tanks down basically. It's got a really good turning radius as well to get out once it has been evac'd. Of 150 one of the tightest turn radiuses you get in any of the planes mainly due to its lower speed it's also got a minigun here which can be quite effective against um, sort of airplanes helicopters and ground units as well the Thunderbolt really nice one now one thing to say about missiles these are missiles there's two mainly types of ordnance we're going to be talking about today that's missiles and bombs now missiles when you bring a plane out with a missile they will generally fire automatically so if you fly it into an air or near to an area where you think there are the enemy when it gets within range and it sees the enemy it has to see them so you have to have some optics on them then it will fire automatically these maverick missiles you can also target it to against a specific unit if you want by clicking on that unit however you have to keep visual on that unit for the whole time if you lose visual the uh, rocket fighting firing airplanes will just start circling when they wear wherever they lose their visual so so just bear that in mind so fly it near the way near the near the enemy near the tanks near the um, armored vehicles and it will shoot they'll shoot their missiles automatically but keep them keep them out of AA range so the second one is this Skyhawk and you can see the Skyhawk has got slightly different weapons it's got these rocket pods and these really like the rocket pods on the helicopters very very accurate though very small radius of fire very precise and these can be useful because generally they're quite cheap I mean the Thunderbolt's quite expensive at 140 I'm not sure if you get one of them or two of them now the Skyhawks I think you get two or three they're only 60 points so you can bring these in an emergency they won't tend not to kill tanks they can take down lightly armored vehicles they can kill and stun infantry they can stun tanks you know and generally they're just a good shock kind of aircraft to be able to use so that's really the two american rocket planes that we're going to have a look at now the russians have got some decent ish ones as well if you look at this one first the mig 27 um, this has got these kh 23m heat missiles an okay range but a nice accuracy and a nice ap power again 
This time, of course, no armor on this. So it's going to be pretty vulnerable. ECM is only 20% and speed is 900. So you just got to be careful using it, really. So you can fly this again near to the armor pushes, but don't get it too close to any anti-air. It's going to get taken down. It's got a nice little gun there that you can use as well the turning radius in this one is quite big at 400 as it is with all the more high speed aircraft so it's going to take a little bit of a turning circle before this evacs so just bear that in mind as well then we've got i'll pin that because we've got the upgrade here the mig 27m um a missile on this one the same main gun here the missile on this one though we've got slightly longer range so it will release its missiles a little bit sooner the rest of the information is pretty similar though. So basically you're getting a slightly better range on your weapon and a slightly better ECM for your extra what extra 30 points that you're going to be paying for this weapon. Okay, then we've got the we've got the M MiG 27K. Let's just pin that one and go up another notch to the MiG 27K. This time you've got a different type of weapon, the KH-27D. Longer range again, still the two missiles. This time it's fire and forget so this one will sort of evacuate as soon as it fires and accuracy nice again nice accuracy slightly better ap power this is going to take down any tank if it hits you've got two missiles so one of them should hit if it gets shots off it's quite expensive 145 again no armor of course and speed's okay but it's got a decent ish ecm at 30 percent so you could probably take one missile if you're lucky but um you'd be lucky to get away with two or three missile hits um, with this plane so yeah not too shabby at all um, and lastly we've got the su-25 now this is a quite a beasty looking well beast beastly looking plane it looks pretty i think it looks pretty awesome myself you've got these uh, s24b rockets with a range of 2450 these are he rockets now I haven't really used this plane much myself, so I'm assuming these will be fired against uh, sort of armoured vehicles, even infantry, I guess. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't really used it too much. The other weapon, the main AP weapon, though, is this one. Maybe a 25. Do good accuracy again, similar to the other planes, and a decent-ish range as well to be firing off with four missiles this time that it's going to let loose, and a gun there as well. So they're the bombers, really. Uh, sorry, they're the uh, anti-tank weapons for the Americans and for the Russians. So we'll move on and we'll have a look at the bombers. Now, the bombers are slightly different to um, is it a Skyhawk. The bombers are slightly different to the rockets uh, planes in that you're going to have to target your bombers. So you need to use the attack um, attack position button in the HUD when you want to use your bombers. Now you can target individual units with bombers as well but you'll tend to find they fire their guns instead of their bombs a lot of the time uh, so just be really careful and I always use the attack area or attack position uh, command on the HUD when I'm using bombers. Also be aware that unlike rockets bombers have to fly pretty much over their targets in order to drop their bomb so they're going to get much closer to the enemy lines than the rocket um, planes that we've previously had a look at so they're going to be getting a lot closer so you're going to have to be really careful with these guys if you don't want to get them shot down so let's have a look at some of the bombers so most of the bombers are firing either well he rounds or napalm basically he bombs or napalm and you can, what's important with you looking at the HE bomb, so this has got an MK82 bomb, you can see, fires HE at a power of 10, is the size of the bombs. This one's got 227 kilogram bombs, four of them, which will drop all at once into a position. Now, the smaller bombs aren't fantastic. They tend to spread them around, so you could use these kind of to stun. They're not going to kill a great deal unless, the, unless it's sort of infantry that are already quite damaged. These aren't very powerful. Um, and that's probably why they're quite cheap but if you want to stun some units you know there's not AA in the air as well because these haven't got any ECM got no armor they're quite slow very very vulnerable airplane this if you want to bring it in next we'll have a look at the intruder Now the intruders um, a pure bomber 
and it's got these snake eye again small bombs but it's got 12 of them so you can sort of bomb quite a large area with this guy and with a decent range and actually 40 percent HP power so it's similar sort of power to the last one we just bring the skyhawk back up actually we'll pin that and have a look at the intruder next to it but it's just got more bombs so you're just going to be laying down more bombs in in an area than you do with this the cheaper model of aircraft again got a little bit of an ecm this time it's a little bit faster but it's go still going to be very vulnerable indeed so next the corsair now the corsair is the first of the napalm bombers and I like napalm bombers um, because it looks cool on the map and they're very good at certain jobs like flushing things out of forests, flushing infantry out of buildings. You can napalm spawn points so that your enemy has trouble bringing their units into a spawn point if you're attacking that region. You can, um, you can even napalm helicopters um, that are flying, that are sort of hovering low on the ground you can you, you can pretty much napalm you can napalm road junctions if it's a busy road junction and the enemy's bringing reinforcements you can napalm the roads to stop them bringing their reinforcements really 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 useful just as napalm artillery is as well a lot of these tend to be a bit vulnerable now this one's got a 30 percent uh, ecm which is quite good for a 75 point um aircraft again the bombs aren't massive so it's not going to do a huge amount of sort of area of spl splash damage if you like with its napalm but it's pretty it's still pretty useful um turn radius is terrible on this so it's going to take a while to get out remember these are going to have to fly over their targets as well when they drop their bombs and a speed of just 750 so okay but again it's going to be vulnerable despite its ecm at 30 percent but quite a nice weapon there now the aardvark is um another bomber this time it's got 12 227 kilogram bombs so quite a lot so do a nice sort of area of damage again probably useful for maybe bombing trees where you can't quite see where the enemy is and stuff like that bombing villages but again be careful with the aa ecm is 20 percent it's a lot faster so it's going to get in quickly and get out a bit better but stealth poor speeds uh, and ecm is not brilliant so it's going to be vulnerable again as in a many many of these bombing type aircraft so try and stun or kill the aa before you send these guys in because you just even though it might get its bombs off you're probably going to lose them if you're not very very careful then we've got the f or we'll just pin that aardvark up because next we've got one of the players favorite well one of my i quite like this aircraft it's a, this time it's a cluster bomber and you see it's got cluster so this weapon fires a cluster of sub uh, sub munition uh, it will deal damage over an area of effect but this time instead of having he power of 10 here for the f treble 3 e aardvark we've got the um, ap power of five and you can drop these on tanks armored vehicles they'll kill armored vehicles they'll certainly stun tanks even big tanks they might not kill them but they'll certainly slow them down do them some damage and uh, it's got quite a nice uh, large-ish area of effect as well so if you think there's some armored vehicles in, a tr in some clump of trees you could just cluster bomb it and try and take out or at least immobilize some of those units it's fast it's got a bit of an ecm quite a large turning radius but yeah i quite like the f3f uh, f111f f oh, well, quite a nice uh, airplane there in fact, I just realised that they both... Oh no, that's the E and that's the F, that's right. Okay, so next we'll have a look at the Nighthawk. I really love the Nighthawk. It's just such a cool looking aircraft. Really different to all the other aircraft in the decks. And the thing of this is, is it's, it's that exceptional stealth, stealth. So it doesn't get seen unless the enemy's got some really good sort of optics or sort of really good recon. Um, where this aircraft's coming in um, if you can get this snuck around the back line somewhere and they haven't got good optic units they're just not going to see this thing before it drops its bombs it also has got quite a long range it's air fire and forget so it's going to drop its bomb and get out of there really quickly it's not the fastest thing in the world so if it does get seen um, it is vulnerable so if they do see it it is very vulnerable because it hasn't got any ECM and it's not the fastest its biggest thing is it can't be seen mainly by units that 
haven't got that good optics. So that's the sort of things you've got to bear in mind when you're flying this thing into an area. But the bomb on it is fantastic. I mean, it, does, it just does a, um, an immense HE power of 20. We'll kill any infantry in a little cluster of buildings. We'll do big damage to tanks and to armoured trucks as well. Uh, to other vehicles so it's a really really awesome weapon but you've got to keep the thing alive you've got to use it carefully and you've got to target where you use it now the russians what have they got in the way of bombers well first of all we've got this il 102 i'm not sure about this now i see a lot of people using this aircraft i've tried using it and i find it really difficult to use except in the end game when maybe the enemy's anti-air has been depleted down to almost nothing even because this is incredibly vulnerable aircraft as far as I can tell. Now, it's a little bit analogous to the Americans' um, what was it? Tank, the th uh, tank buster aircraft in that it has got some armour. So it can take some like AAA flak, but again, if radar missiles are shooting at it, it's very vulnerable. Um, stealth support, so it's going to be spotted coming in. It's got some really, really nice bombs. 14 500 kilogram bombs. It's going to do a lot of damage to light, light medium armoured vehicles. Also to infantry. It's going to decimate infantry if you can get this on target. It's also got a couple of nice guns as well, which it can use. One at the back and one at the front. So, yeah, I mean, so it's not... I don't know. I, I, I tend not to put this in my decks because I just think it's too vulnerable when it's bomber and it's got to fly over its target. You know, at least with the uh, tank buster, it doesn't have to fly over the target to release its rockets. So, you, and I see a lot of players using these, and they are useful, they are good, but not into heavy anti-air, basically. And it is expensive if you lose it at 180 points. Then we've got the MiG 21 MT. This is just a little uh, cheap cluster bomber if you need one. Again, quite useful if you're sort of spot a tank push the tank push isn't really supported by hardly any aa you could send this guy in if there is aa it's going to get shot down because it's got no ecm and it's well the speed's quite high you can cluster bomb kind of areas where tanks are pushing forward stuff like that or even areas where tanks are hidden as long as there's no anti-air around yet again then we've got the mig 25 rtb another cluster another cluster bomb. let's just click this one up and we'll just compare the two so another cluster bomber. This time it's got more bombs really. It's more powerful. Um, the AP power for each one's the same, but obviously it's got like four times as much ordnance to drop as the cheaper one. And costing, well, not quite twice as much, but a little bit more. Everything else is pretty much the same. It's got a bit of an ACM this time, so gonna take a little bit of a hit maybe uh, before it goes down. Um, yeah, the accuracy you can see is a bit lower, so it'll probably have a bit of a wider area of effect as well so yeah there's a couple of cluster bombers for the russians then we've got the su-24m another bomber again not really powerful bombs but it's got 30 of them so you can have a nice area of effect with this looks quite cool as well um he power is pretty good at 11 a little bit more than some of the others um that's what you can say really it's got a bit of an ecm it's got a gun you know it's it's okay look after it because it costs 130 points it's going to do a lot of damage in on area wise to infantry and stuff like that if you can get all those bombs off into over a town full of infantry but it is vulnerable again to anti-air and lastly we've got this yak 38 which i'll pin and i'll look at the yak 38m at the same time this is a very standard type of napalm bomber in the yak 38 and 38m is pretty much exactly the same except it's got these four bombs as well so these are cheap they're fairly plentiful we've talked about napalm before it's pretty useful they're quite slow and they've got poor stealth so don't run this into and they've got no ecm don't run this anywhere there's anti-air it's going to get shot down unless you want to suicide it same with this guy don't run it anywhere with anti-air or else you're just suiciding it unless you really want to suicide it to get rid of something uh, so maybe you're attacking an important area and you need to get rid of some infantry first or something like that but yeah try to get down their AA. So with all these aircraft really, with all these attack aircraft, uh, apart from a couple of them that have got sort of a little bit of armour and the ones with the better ECM, they're all pretty vulnerable to anti-air fire. 
So lastly, we're going to have a look at the multi-role aircraft. Now, I'm not going to I'll go through I don't think I'll go through all of these just for the necessity of time on the video but basically these guys do a little bit of everything and some people love them some people sort of hate them they're not really specialized in any particular job a lot of them are fighters that have had bombs added to them um, we'll take an example we'll have a look at this Harrier here um, it's an American Harrier and you can see it's got some nice anti uh, anti-tank weapon maverick missiles they're really powerful it's got two of them and it's got a little bit of anti-air defense and it's got this missile uh, sorry this minigun as well now the good thing about these is you can send them in and they can defend themselves a little bit if the other player has anti-air planes out as well because they can shoot back and defend themselves while they're flying over whereas of course the ones without the anti-air missiles can't do that they'll perhaps need air cover from a different type of plane flying around at the same time so that's really what they're used for so this one's got some nice maverick missiles we'll have a look at some one a couple of have a look at um, the su-27m this is a nice aircraft it's really expensive looks absolutely awesome it's got these 7000 meter vimpel missiles so it can sort of head for a target and shoot at any distant air superiority fighters while it's on its way in as long as it can see them with a nice accuracy and four missiles and then it can let rip with these armor piercing missiles as well once it gets into range of the armor um, it's also got a 50% ECM which is excellent and a speed of 1000 this is an awesome plane really really good it can take a bit of a hit from AA still be careful with it um, but it's an awesome, awesome weapon. Um, we'll have a look at one more, the Hornet. A lot of people like these Hornets. And they're a little bit, I guess, similar to the Harrier. You've got your Maverick missiles. You've got, you can defend itself a little bit going into battle. Um, it's got a decent ECM, this one, though. And it goes at 1,000 miles an hour, so pretty fast. So I'm not going to go through all of the sort of multi-role aircraft. As I, like, as I say, you know, you can bring one aircraft in as a fighter and a bomber as well or an, as, a, as a fighter and an anti-tank weapon as well on the same aircraft so yeah so if you're a bit limited for space you could go for these guys so i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you got something out of it please do comment like and subscribe and have a look at some of the other tutorials maybe if you're interested and i'll see you in the next one